<laughs> it's Philly is funny with Bennett and Boss. Yeah, it's like the fifty. It's almost like in some places sixty-one degrees out here. Yeah, it could I be snow. the California heat. So what? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We're excited to have you here. <laughs> Thank I, you. I mean, a bunch of shows at Punchline Philly, my favorite spot in the city. So, oh my, it's it's so amazing. And what I love about the club is they invest in talent. Because the first time I came out was like four years ago or maybe five years ago. Laura was there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. tell you, I think two years ago. Two years ago? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, she's they, been stalking we you. We got no a deal. picture. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. That's amazing. But I love it because they, like, nurture talent. And, like, people know me from TV as a host, but as a comedian, I'm fairly new. I've only been doing it eight years. So, like, you know, they gave me a chance. And, you know, we're growing every single year. And that's what I love about Punchline and – like there, there's a handful of clubs that have done that for me, and I really appreciate that. So yeah. that's really cool. And it's so good to talk to a fellow radio person. What on God's green earth got you into radio? Uh, you <laughs> My know what? gosh, Paul Cubby Bryant. Uh, yeah, he's a, he was a ran Z100 KTU, and uh, I think he's at Mix now. But he was my, I was his intern. And he was getting paid all this money to hang out at clubs and say 104 KRB. So I was like, I want to do that job. <laughs> so and literally, I would have to set everything up and then pack it all up. I was like, I want to be the guy that just shows up and then just leaves after right. it's over. So he got me into radio, and then radio took off. And then uh, from radio, that led me to TV. And from TV, I met all like Chelsea, the Kardashians, and different people that put me on their shows. And that kind of in uh, e entertainment, and that launched me into uh, comedy and what I do today. So amazing. Good yeah, for you, it, man. it's a wild story. Like, I didn't even want to be on TV. Yeah. Like, I never dreamed about being a stand-up comedian or on TV. But it's weird. Like, when you, I, I wanted to play professional football, but I got too many concussions in college. And this was before we even really? knew about it. I didn't so, know that. Yeah, so I couldn't play anymore. So it's a blessing because I don't know what would have happened to me, you know, if I kept playing football because you see what happened to these players. Yeah. So it's a blessing where I feel like, I'm much older than when you retire in football, but I feel like my life is just starting with a new career. You so know what exciting. I mean? And that's what's great about it. And I have a coworker. We have a coworker, Bobby Smith. Is that oh, name? Oh, yeah, Bobby Smith. We worked together. I just saw him <laughs> at, in Austin, Texas. He's like, I got stories on Michael oh, Yo for days. Goodness. Yes, he knows the young Michael Yo. Yeah. When I was running around in the streets of Austin, Texas. I was like, oh, hop yeah. on this podcast. I need to hear this. I need like, to hear some dirt. I took everybody out. Like, I was the mayor of all. I would take everybody out. I knew everybody. <laughs> my friends owned all all the clubs like I was that guy I was that guy you wanted to go out like I was good friends with O-Town when they came in oh my god <laughs> like that, like I'm still friends with O-Town like oh Trevor god. and what Eric, are they up to uh, the, well, Tre good. Trevor I, I uh, put him up in stand-up for his first time ever and he actually really? did not bad he did five minutes or yeah. like seven minutes and he didn't do bad but you know they still tour and things like that but he wants to try stand-up and uh, I, I did I brought him on and he did good so he's doing that Eric's doing more producing and they're on tour. Yeah. They're on tour right now doing their thing. So, That's incredible. Yeah, so I, I stayed in touch with O-Town. I knew so many. It's funny. Now I'm on, like, an old school station, like, um, uh, like uh, what is it, early 2000s. Okay. So I'm playing O-Town, NSYNC, That's amazing. Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears, all the stuff I came up totally. with. Totally. Same here, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's interesting to see the evolution. But I'm. it's weird to know so many people. Hello. NBC 10 wanted to sign a little bit. NBC 10's here. <laughs> What's up, NBC 10? Welcome to the Philly is Funny What's podcast. Up? They're yeah. just crashing this. I love this. What's, What's happening? Up, Michael. Don't you love all the windows around here? Like, I kind of feel it. like I'm a zoo animal. Like, I'm just like, on, oh, yeah. on display. I'm just like, what do you want to see? Yeah, yeah, that's what we are. We're, on the, we're, we're in an aquarium, but that's what you love about uh, the radio. What I love about radio is the one thing that if people don't like what you have to say, they can immediately call you up and let you know in real time. Yeah. You know, but now you got Twitter for that. But radio, like on TV, they really can't do that because a lot of stuff is taped. A lot, right. Like, you know, you, I've been on TV and you don't feel the same connection as you do. In it's radio. so personal. It's so it's so intimate. Like that, yeah. that connection in radio. That's what drove me into radio. First yeah. And, foremost. and then podcasting, too. It's like, you know, I've been on, like I went on Joe Rogan mm -hmm. probably about six months ago. Yeah. And I'm actually going to be on his show again in two weeks. And the connection with his audience. Like, they love Joe Oh, my Rogan. gosh. Like, he's like— Me included, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's a thing where he's like a leader. He's their leader, you know what I mean? <laughs> and if he likes you, they like you. I've never gotten so much, like, love and traction on Instagram and different things than being on his podcast. It's unbelievable. Like, they love that dude. Yeah. And I love him, too. I mean, he's great. I know, I've known him for 21 years since uh, I did Fear Factor. 
Right. So right. I was the first. When was that? That was. I was on the pilot episode of Fear Factor. Okay. This is when they didn't even know the name of the show. I go into the casting because I lived in Austin. They go, "Do you want to do something like adventurous and that nobody's ever done before?" I'll go, "I'm a radio DJ. I got all day to do nothing." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, absolutely." So I went in. They cast me. I came out. It was uh, me and six other people. And the first night I met Joe Rogan was at the Saddle Ranch. That's where they, you know, you get on the horse and you do all sure. that stupid stuff. So that's the first night I met him, and uh, we've been friends ever since. That's yeah, incredible. and that's and I still know him. I see him in the comedy clubs, and he puts me on his podcast, and it's great. That's a good connection to have. Oh, it's a great <laughs> connection to have. He's the best. He's the best. And now you're going all over uh, the I'm Exhausted tour. Yes. Two so... kids. Is this like an excuse to like get out of the house? Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got to lie to my wife a lot. I lie to my wife a lot on tour because she's not sleeping. We have a two-month-old, and we have uh, a son that's almost three. And she always asks in the morning, how'd you sleep? And I got to lie. I go, oh, it was horrible. You know, there was noise in the hotel, but I slept great. You know, it's the first time I slept great in like months. But uh, I'm exhausted to her. It's basically now I'm a father of two and with my wife. And it's a thing where it's once you have one, it's fine. But when you have two, it's literally you're passing off kids. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. If one falls asleep, the other one's up. Once the other one falls asleep, the other one wakes up. And it's just it's just back and forth, back and forth. And I have all new material. I have a special on michaelyo.com. You can watch it for free. It'll link you to Amazon Prime. But that special is called Blasian. And that's about my life before marriage. Then I got married and my son was one. So this is a pickup from where my son, I'm exhausted, is a pickup from where the uh, special stops at one. And I shoot this one at the end of this year. So this is my second stop. So everybody's going to hear a lot of new material. So it's going to be great. That's amazing. It's going to be great. Yeah. And you refer uh, as yourself as a starter Bye, black. NBC. Bye, NBC. Bye, <laughs> NBC. Love to have you here. guys. <laughs> Welcome anytime. As a starter black, you refer yourself as. Oh, yeah. As. I'm a starter black. Starter yeah. black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me explain yeah, what Yeah, what does a starter black mean? Well, okay. Okay. So I grew up in Houston, Texas, all like white people, right? Yeah. And I went to an all white school. So... Like, girls would date me, and it may sound bad today, but girls would date me because I was black, but they didn't think I was black, black. So I called myself a starter black because it was kind of like, oh, we can try this dude out. You know, I can, I can bring him around. People don't know what he really is. You know, I'm a gateway drug to blackness. Like, they start with me, and then they end up with, like, somebody really black. You know what I mean? So, hey, I took it. I don't care. I don't care. Hey, that, I take what I can get. That's what I'm saying. So I have no problem with the label Starter Black. I made it so up. Funny. So there you go. It's a weird connection because I didn't realize that you are a hardcore Bachelor fan. Oh, my God. And Laura yes. is like, yes. Laura, Laura oh, does so these Bachelor can, recaps. Can we talk about it? Yeah, I'm I've never so seen it. I'm so excited that you're here and I see that you do Bachelor recaps. I, yeah. too, do Bachelor recaps. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> okay, okay. McKenna's crazy. Yeah, crazy. I we can talk about that. She's we can, finally gone. She's finally gone. We can talk about how w the girl, Victoria, the one that just got, Victoria P. Yeah, the nurse. She's going to be the next Bachelorette, I bet. Yeah, I know. I cannot. That was shocking. No, How do you let her go? I know, because you know what's funny is, please go to my Instagram at Michael Yo. People <laughs> say my wife looks like Victoria P. All right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Victoria. A good thing, yes. Yeah. No, no, it's a good yes, thing. Victoria P. Victoria P. <laughs> but, but she did this speech on episode two or three where she told uh, Peter, who is the most boring I know. bachelor in history. Peter is off. Peter is so bad <laughs> that they had to get these girls to be high drama. Because he's so boring. He can't make a decision. He's like, oh, no. like he would be the, I mean, he's just the worst. The worst. <laughs> and then when I talk about people on The Bachelor, I'm talking about the character. I'm talking about the character they play on the show. I'm not talking about them in real life. So, yeah. because I know everybody on that show, it's heightened. Sure. sure. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's not really them, it's what producers tell them to be. Right. And since he can't make a decision, they're having the girls act crazy around him <laughs> and start fights. So, who do you think is going to win? Oh, man, I'm thinking he's going to end up with Champagne Gate Kelsey now. No. I know. Champagne it's... Gate Kelsey? Oh, yeah. I I don't know why she is still she there. Spit up, she spit up, like, she tried to drink champagne and exploded <laughs> in her mouth. A meme. And splashed all over her face. Yeah. It was beautiful. It was, yeah, amazing You television. think she, he's going to end up with her? So, here's, I heard Kelly, but I, I don't know. No, 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 it's Madison. Madison's great. She's I a basketball love... player. She stays. She doesn't get into drama. Madison is going to win, I believe. Also, I love let me tell you, her, but... you know about Victoria F, though, what's coming out. 
Oh, yeah, she's a mess. Yeah. No, no, but you know what story's coming out. What? She's broken up four marriages. Ooh. <laughs> so she makes it to... <laughs> what the Christ you guys watching? <laughs> what is this? Like... She's broken up four marriages because uh, uh, I, I do... Te- I mean, uh, Jess from Chatty Broads, they're a huge... Ba- Becca was on The Bachelor. So they come on my show all the time, and they go, dude, this girl is rumored to break up four marriages, and that's why she makes it far. But then, at the end... They let Peter know that she broke wow. up four marriages. Wow. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I'm hearing. But she looks like that type of woman. She's Dang. a pharmaceutical salesperson. She's <laughs> dealing with doctors all the time. She's cute. You're talking about drugs. I'm taking you out to dinner, mixing them, and then I'm sleeping with your husband. Yeah. That's wow. Victoria F. Rumored, allegedly, so nobody gets allegedly, allegedly. allegedly. Yeah. Inside yeah. scoop. I'm telling you, it's getting real on the back. You should watch. It's great. I, it's I guess great. I have to. Anyone who watches this show, they're extremely passionate about it. I mean, yeah, because it's so dumb. Like, <laughs> I, I watch it because it's so dumb. You're right. You know what I mean? My wife loves it. So, so I like got a it. mindless thing to put on. Like a, it is. Yeah. It is. But it's it's funny. Like this is the line that they say on The Bachelor. That's so ridiculous. It's like I didn't know there was gonna be so much drama. I don't like drama. It's like why are you on The Bachelor <laughs> right. if you don't like drama? Pick the wrong show. That's like yeah. me saying I hate pizza, but I'm at Pizza Hut. Right. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> it's so ridiculous, man. But I love it because people love my commentary on it. Because yeah. here's the thing that's different from my podcast about The Bachelor. Uh, than other people's podcasts about The Bachelor is I'm not trying to get any of these people on my show. So I can be real. Right. I have friends with podcasts that talk about that they have to play by the rules because they want those people as guests. I could care less. Right. <laughs> I, I don't care about yeah. those people. But I'm not, I'm never mean, right. but I'm very honest. But, but you keep it real. Like, like yeah. nobody else on there probably be like, uh, Peter's horrible. Like, right. I'm like, Peter's the worst Bachelor they've ever had. <laughs> and they're making the girls look crazy just so he can look better. You know? Right. That's right, what I'm right. saying. Yeah. yeah. I got to check this out. You do. Also, no, you don't. No, 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 yeah, no. no, you do. Unless you're doing a show about it, I wouldn't watch it. It's, <laughs> it's amazing. Here's what's amazing. Having said all of that, don't watch it. No, <laughs> it's amazing that women love this show. Yeah. Because if I walked into a group of women and said, hey, I got a TV show where one dude can sleep with 26 women and doesn't even have to marry at the end of the show, <laughs> those women would be like, you're a misogynist pig. <laughs> right, yeah. But yet, when it's on TV, it's like, oh my God. Yeah, how does that show exist in 2020 now that you put it that way? It's like, no, that, it's, the, it's yeah. the most misogynist show right. that you could ever have. And then women defend it. Well, well, we do the same. We have The Bachelorette. Yeah, but it started with The Bachelor for 20 seasons before it got to <laughs> Before the you got yours. Before you got yours. <laughs> like, it's just so ridiculous how it's like, oh, my God. Like, dudes are watching this. You got to remember, dudes are watching this with their women. I'm a good right. guy. I'm, I'm a great husband. <laughs> but you gotta, I'm, we'll I'm talking about there. normal dudes, right, that are not good husbands, are watching this with their wives going, my wife likes to watch a TV show where a dude basically cheats on every single girl he's with. <laughs> and you like that? <laughs> Pretty okay. And they're eating it up. They're tweeting about oh, it, live tweeting. tweeting. About it, and they're like, oh, my God, this is the romantic. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're ridiculous. This is not romantic. Yeah. This is the worst it's the opposite. thing ever. It, I know. Yeah. I'm watching my wife get caught up into it. I'm going, I can't believe women love this show because it's so against what they preach. Right. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> like, we want an honest man. We want a man that doesn't cheat. We, this dude is sleeping with 20, <laughs> could sleep with 26 women. And then just oh think about it. you get engaged to him. You got to watch all this oh. back. Back. The him whole season making of out. It. And then it's on record for the rest of your lives. So like, like, they, just think yeah. about what she can bring up at any time. They get in a fight. <laughs> well, I remember when you br- m- remember m- episode five. Yeah, episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They got, she got a whole catalog of bringing it up. That's so true. Wait, so they actually do get engaged? That's the actual thing. Sometimes, yeah. oh, okay. It never works. I think like they've had. I, I can't tell. Maybe close to fifty seasons, not fifty years, but yeah. fifty right. seasons. Yeah. And from the Bachelor, the Bachelor in Paradise, the Bachelorette, mm. and they had six people that are still together. Yeah, and that's, that's not kids. good. That's not that's, a good. It's that's not great. Right. No, that's terrible percentages. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's but the horrible. ratings are so up. No, yeah. people, uh, right? But people are just watching it to uh, get, I mean, people go on it just to get Instagram followers. You right. go on that show and you're a girl that has heat behind you, you'll go, I remember Hannah B, mm-hmm. the the one that was on last year. She went from 2000, when I saw her when she first got announced, because my friends work at CBS, I looked her up because my wife is a pageant. She was in pageants. So she goes, you got to look up this girl, Hannah B. She's going to be on The Bachelor. This is before it broke or any 2,000 followers. Girl's over a million now. Just from that show. Jeez. So just getting, Sell your soul for the gram. Well, yeah, because <laughs> just from that show after it, 
You can sell products on it. I mean, you're set. You're set for a good five to six years after that show right. if you do it right. So if I was a girl, I would go on. I don't care about <laughs> falling in love. Percentages, I'm not going to fall in love. Let me act like I want to fall in love, yeah. but get Instagram followers. Right. That's I don't want to fall in love. I want followers. Yeah, I can't believe I just yeah. talked 10 minutes about this. <laughs> yeah. By myself. The I was passion. literally talking to yeah. myself about The Bachelor <laughs> for 10 minutes. I could talk about The Bachelor all damn day, Michael. Yeah. Yeah, but unfortunately, you have to go. And, do I? Uh, you do. Oh. I know. It sucks. But we can't wait to see you uh, tonight and tomorrow. Yes. Bunch of shows at Punchline Philly. We're both going to be there. You're going to yeah. which, which show tomorrow night? The late which one or the one? early one? I think one? I'm going to go to the late one. The late one? Oh, yeah. You're going to love it. Which one are you going to? I think the early one because okay. I'm old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to do the sleep math. I got to do the sleep thing, man. Yeah, sleep math. We figure out. You. We got to know how much sleep we're going to get before we even leave the house. I I'm, do it all the time. I'm more about day drinking now. Like, I can't drink like when it's dark out. You're day, a day drink. Day drink. Yeah. I can't I'm drink. have fun. Like, yeah, how old are you? If you I'm 33. I'll oh, be 33 in March. Oh, you're young. Shut up. <laughs> you should. Like, when I was 37, I was going hard. Like, like you're young. 33. Oh, 33. Man. I know. Oh, I was. Oh, God. You're weak. <laughs> that's that's 33. In, oh, I can't. I'm I can't. Old. Shut up. <laughs> You don't know what old uh, is. I mean, I look young because I'm black and Asian, but you still. You do look young. I am. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm 137 years old. I'm just <laughs> letting you know that's what I am right now. No, but uh, I, I, did, I don't drink anymore. No. I can't drink. It, it physically hurts me to drink. So I'm saying, like, my hangovers are way rough now. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. As you get older, your hangover is like, and I, I don't know. I think I'm allergic to alcohol. Mm. And not being funny, but I think. I would have a sip of a drink and have a headache for three days. So I had to stop. <laughs> when I was 21, I had to stop drinking. Yeah. Yeah. And I really never drank hard, but I just stopped it all. Yeah. yeah. And I feel much better. And I will live way longer than you. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers to that. <laughs> Michael Yo, uh, two shows tonight, right? Two shows tonight, 7.30 and 9.45. Two shows tomorrow, 7.30, 9.45. What I would love you to do, too, is check out my website. We just redid it, michaelyo.com. And follow me on the gram at Michael Yo. I just posted a beautiful picture of my family. Oh. <laughs> I miss my kids so much. I miss them. Michael Yo, thank you for coming by. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. Philly is funny with Bennett and Boss. Exclusively on radio.com.